little bit of freeze in the in the in the, in the soil. That's why I'm using the pickaxe, but they're not too bad. You know, it's still coming out okay. Oh, this is just beautiful. Beautiful part. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGrinding.com and it's uh, December 27th, I think, as I record this right now. And uh, I thought I would do a end of season harvest type thing, show you what's uh, available in the garden for harvest uh, using various tricks that I've used. And just growing certain things that can take being cold. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, minus double digits uh, Celsius, so it was like minus 11 last night, I think. I was certainly minus 11, minus 11 Celsius when I woke up this morning. So uh, hopefully the wind isn't too bad as I record this. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna take you around. I'm making a chicken dinner tonight and I thought I'd get some things to go with that. So uh, come along, let's have a look. And just in case you're skeptical that I don't have a real, uh, you know, bona fide uh, Canadian winter here. Uh, <laughs> the, the weather pattern here is basically it, uh, it gets uh, close to freezing and it warms up to right around zero Celsius we get a bunch of snow and then we get a bunch of rain and the snow melts and then it drops down to double digits uh, for a few you know for a week or so and everything freezes solid then it warms up everything melts we get a bit of snow and then it freezes again so I'll put some footage up on my camera but about a week ago everything was covered in snow the kids were sledding in the backyard and now almost all the snow is gone and you can see from the you know the state of my uh, goldfish pond here that uh, you know, she's, uh, she's frozen up. Let's just see how thick the ice is here. Oh, we got... Oh, I'd say... I mean, I'm standing on it. <laughs> but uh, we, got about three, we got about three inches here. I mean, a lot of the big lakes aren't frozen up yet. They're frozen around the edges and the freeze, half frozen, half thawed, and stuff like that. But anyway, just so you have a sense of uh, the temperature, right? It's, it's cold. It's winter. <laughs> So here's some footage that I captured maybe a week prior, December 1st, December, oh, sorry, December 20th, 21st, 22nd, something like that. And uh, we got a good snow and it stuck around for a few days. Uh, eventually, um, <laughs> it warmed up and it rained and all the snow pretty much disappeared, except for a few pockets here or there. Um, but, you know, th this is some footage I filmed for another video that I'm not sure if I'm going to use. But anyway, um, this is like right behind the garden, a stone's throw from the garden. You can see it's uh, we've got a good layer of snow and, uh, and that sort of thing. But even since I filmed this video, so the one you're watching now, not this week ago video, but the one you're watching right now, within a 24-hour period of filming the video, uh, and it was like minus 11 that morning, it warmed up, it got to zero, it snowed, and then it rained, and then it got up to plus four, and then by the following morning, it was well below freezing again. So uh, very variable temperatures out where I am here. <laughs> All right, so uh, here we have the last of my kale. It doesn't look that impressive, but you know, it's gotta be used anyway, so it's still edible, it's certainly edible. You sort of pick through and you know, you sort it out indoors. Some of it's like this piece here, Got a freezer burnt, right? So, I mean, you, you don't use those. But there's no point in leaving it out. It's just going to get more freezer burnt. So, you might as well just pick everything that looks, uh, you know, usable. And I got lots of stuff in my uh, in my freezer that I blanched and put down. Uh, I know people always bring this up, but I don't bother doing this in cold frames for lots of reasons. Uh, mainly because I just don't find it's worth worth the expense. I find you, if you just grow a lot of kale, if you got the space like I do, it's a lot more, a uh, lot better use to your time if you just grow a lot and freeze it. Uh, anyways, that's it. That's the last of the last of the kale being harvested this year. Doesn't look very pretty, but it's certainly good. So I'm not altogether confident that I got enough kale for one meal out of that. So uh, I got a couple of these. Uh, so this is the uh, Siberian kale, right? And uh, I got a couple of these uh, winter boar kale left. Uh, I just leave them outside like this. And, uh, and you can't leave them outside indefinitely because they're, they're really not getting any hydration. Uh, so I got one, two, three, four, five. I got five of these left. 
that's five meals. So over the next week, I'm going to harvest the rest of these. Uh, I find January, you know, is, it's a bit iffy leaving kale out in January. The leaves start getting a, a sort of, well, the same sort of look as the ones I showed you earlier, that freezer burnt look. Anyway. That's all I do. <laughs> I'm going to bring that inside. So it, it's, uh, it was minus 11 this morning, and if you came out and you hit this on the ground, it would smash into a thousand pieces like it had been dipped in liquid nitrogen. But now it's it's warmed up, you know, it's it's still below zero, I'd say, but maybe minus two or minus three. And it has the, you know, it's sort of got its integrity back. Well, when you get to the minus double digits, this becomes very brittle and it just smashes. But it can come back from that, right? Come back. And I've actually, if for, for whatever reason, it it warmed way up. Uh, this will start growing again. Uh, anyway, that's all the kale I need. Now I need some root veg. All right, so I got some uh, power tips in this bed here. Put this plastic dome over them to keep the uh, soil from freezing. Let's see how well it works. frozen but not bad. So the trick is with this is that you harvest uh, everything from the outer edge because this stuff freezes up a lot more. This thing, basically you know a hand span from the edge of the bed tends to freeze and the inner you know inner area right you want to have a hand span from the edge of the uh, dome but the inner bit even if it does freeze a bit it thaws out every day um, unless you get a really dark cold you know uh, overcast sort of uh, stretch of days, but uh, yeah, it looks like we're we're okay here. There's one I missed right around the edge. Some nice parsnips here, though. You're doing a roasted dinner. This is the like, uh, hollow crown variety. These ones, anyway. Nice. You harvest them this time of year; they just taste great. I must have missed those ones. There shouldn't have been any, any of that, that part. All right, next row. I got some over here. A little bit of freeze in the in the in the in the soil. That's why I'm using the pickaxe, but they're not too bad. You know, they're still coming out okay. Oh, these are just beautiful, beautiful parsnips. This is probably enough. I have a whole bunch stored inside as well, but I thought I'd try to leave some out. You now, some people keep them under uh, bales of hay and stuff like that. So I thought I'd do it this way to see how comparable the approach is to bales of hay. Right, just putting a dome over it. It seems at least it's, you know, it's only December and it's, it's going to get colder and, you know, <laughs> things are going to get a whole lot worse before they get, get better. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, it seems to, seems to have worked. go. Yeah, so not a bad haul for December. Gonna be sweet as can be. All right, that's parsnips. Now uh, let's go after some carrots. All right, let's lift this baby up. So I've harvested about half the carrots in this bed. Again, I have a bunch inside in cold storage, but I thought I'd leave some out here like this. This bed doesn't get as much sun as the one where the parsnips are, so I'm more concerned with these. Certainly it's 
good and frozen on the edge there. Very frozen. <laughs> I can't even get that those carrots free of that soil there. But I think as we get towards the center, it should uh, it should give up a little bit. Yeah, remarkable difference. This bed over the last one. Just not as this is. I mean, the bed where I have the parsnips is about I don't know, 15 feet that way. But uh, we're closer to the edge of the forest here, and it just doesn't get as much uh, direct sunlight. Maybe an hour, maybe an hour less a day. Maybe that's. Yeah, yeah. I think I I want to get all of these out of here. Uh, Maybe wait for a good sunny day or something, but these are these are not wanting to come out. They're just barely coming out. I mean, it could be worse. This this could be just solid ice. One thing, good thing about keeping this covered with the dome is that uh, the rain and the snow melt and all that doesn't get in, so we don't have ice added to the mix. And you know, just I have to speak to this because people are bringing up the reason I'm not using bales of hay here is because I have to pay for those. And yes, I had to pay for the materials I made my domes with, uh, but I use those domes for other things, not just for this, right? So they're a multitasker, right? Whereas the hay, you use it for a while and then uh, it breaks down and it just becomes mulch and you've paid for it. I don't like paying for my mulch. I like getting all my mulch for free. If I could get bales of hay for free, I'd use them in this way for sure. I have to pay for hay. So since these uh, these domes are something I use anyway, basically turning any bed I want into a temporary cold frame, right? It's almost like having a modular cold frame system in your garden, because any bed you want, assuming it's been built to the same dimensions as the uh, the dome, any bed you want becomes a cold frame for that season or for a certain part of the season when you want it the way you want it. So I think it's just a great way to go about it. Uh, anyway, let's see what else we got here. I mean, it certainly has decreased the freeze. Now this dome also, it's got a big hole in the top, so it's probably not working as well as it could. Maybe that's another reason why it's, the soil's more frozen than the, than the one where the parsnips are. But just in terms of like, the vigor of the plants I grew on this side of the garden. Nothing here grew as well as over there. It was just not as sunny. I grew cucumbers over there and here, and the cucumbers over there were more vigorous, uh, and so on and so forth. For basically anything I grew here was a little less vigorous. Probably a good place for greens and things like that. Um, you know, that's probably enough carrots. Now I roast these in the oven and I cook a lot uh, because they're uh, just so easy to roast up and then you've got them for for other things during the week. You can use them in other dishes, put them in a soup, whatever. All right, that's probably enough carrots. There we go. Oh, and one more. You know, they're sort of frozen in. These are just chunks of ice. Anyway, the dome has kept it from being as... No. It could have been worse, right? <laughs> is the point, right? Could have been worse. So I'm glad I had the dome on here. Certainly still able to harvest them. But without this, this would just be solid. Yeah, so just to contrast techniques. Uh, these are carrots, but these are carrots on a south-facing slope sort of thing, right? And I put this, uh, this is kind of like a little temporary, you know, cold frame, I guess. And I put this over them. But you can see, I tucked all kinds of uh, stuff underneath here to sort of um, insulate it. Right, I basically filled any, any gap. Just like if you're insulating a house. In any sort of gap, I jammed some hay or straw or something in there. Right, all the way around to make a really good seal. And then I, uh, I put this thing here to, uh, to pop the dome up so that uh, water and stuff wouldn't build up there. So it's got a bit of a dome, 
Also, by having a dome there, any warm air will get trapped there and just create a sort of microclimate, a little bit better, more effective microclimate. So that's all I did with that. Now let's see uh, how effective this is going. Right, by contrast, the leaf carrots come out any easier than the other ones. How much, what's the difference? Yeah, so this soil is, is barely frozen by contrast. Yeah, very, totally different, totally different situation here with these, right? They just pull out, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, these aren't the greatest uh, carrots in the world here, but uh, no, they're, they're very in size, but anyway, um, yeah, definitely more workable, right? More workable soil. You can see the soil isn't all frozen up. It's, it's soft and it's even actually wet. Right, the water in the soil hasn't turned to ice like in the other bed. Anyway, I uh, just out gathering some food in the garden. Got some kale, got some carrots, got some nice parsnips. I'm gonna have a delicious roast dinner. And just to give you an idea of, uh, you know, how you can still continue to get from your garden. Oh, the garden's pretty much done, but there's still some stuff out here. And with these domes, you can delay the complete harvesting of your um, of your root veg while at the same time having the use of those domes next spring to get things started earlier, get a jump start on things, help germinate things, and even as I've done before and shown, uh, start your heat loving plants outside without the need of transplants or anything like that. I've got lots of videos on that if you're new to the channel. Uh, one trick this time of year for um, effectively using the domes uh, well, number one is to have them in the sunniest part of your garden, right? If they're in the shade, they're not gonna... The fact that there's a dome isn't gonna make much of a difference. They need sun to do their magic. But also, just how well of a seal you've got. Right? If there's gaps, if there's air spaces, if there's a hole in the top, all those sorts of things, the uh, effectiveness of the dome goes right down the drain. Now, it's a nice dry day today, so I'm gonna bring some tape out and tape the hole that's in the one that these carrots were in, I think. You know, apart from just it just being not quite as sunny a location, uh, just the fact that there's a hole, it's a hole about maybe two inches in diameter. That's a pretty big hole. <laughs> You're really going to lose a lot of heat through a hole like that. Um, you know, because uh, if you've ever tried to make like a shelter or something like that, uh, when it's really cold, double digits minus uh, a hole like that, you lose all your heat through it pretty fast. It's basically like a chimney without a fire. So, uh, yeah, put some tape on that hole. Keep everything sealed up really good. Make sure that, you know, the ground, you've got like a good seal, if you know what I mean, right? You don't want to be able to get your hand through any holes. Uh, the better a seal you have around that this time of year, uh, the better it's going to prevent your soil from freezing up and, uh, uh, and to whatever extent you're able to uh, extend your harvest and that sort of thing, uh, a good seal makes a difference. So I hope you found that interesting. There's a few little tidbits there. Uh, just about New Year's, so uh, Happy New Year's to those that are, uh, you know, uh, celebrating in whatever way. A um, little update, uh, Vessi Seeds has uh, taken up with me again for 2020. So the uh, coupon code for 2020 is going to be GAVS20. I'll have it in the coupon code, or in the um, uh, description box. You know, last year, tw 2019, it was GAVS, Greg, you know, uh, GAVS19, uh, and this year it's going to be GAVS20, right? So the GAVS19, it's just a coupon code for free shipping uh, with the exception of uh, oversized items. Um, it will continue to be uh, uh, valid till the end of December 31st. And then uh, in 2020, January 1st, 2020, GAVS20 GAVS will be the coupon code for 2020. Uh, and I hope you make use of that. and. Uh, you know, if, you, if there's something they sell that you need, buy it from them and help support the channel and everything I'm doing here. So, hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGarden.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs>